Hi everyone on booktube, it's Andrea and I'm back! Yes, I know I haven't posted a video for just over a week. There's a couple of reasons for that. The first reason is I've had a few computer problems and my computer has been serviced so there's no point in me putting up, a, well, recording Friday reads while my computer was in the shop being serviced. So I now have my desktop back, my laptop is now being serviced. They had, I had problems on both of them but they're now being done so Hopefully we won't have a break like this. And also, I've just got back from a week's holiday in Tenerife, so I'm just going to insert some gratitude footage. Ebooks. So we'll start with, um, the f I mean I'll do them in order that I read them and the first one that I read this month was Tess Gerritsen's The Silent Girl. I love Tess Gerritsen, I have quite a few of her um, books up on my shelf behind me. You can't see them because they're right at the top. Um, but this is one I hadn't read and I picked this up for buy two for a five or buy three for a five or something like that in the works. Um, so this is um, uh, sorry, um, a severed hand is found in uh, Boston's Chinatown and then they find the rest of the body on the roof of the building. Um, and this goes back, this attack has uh, its roots in an unsolved mystery, although it wasn't an unsolved mystery, it was a murder-suicide case. However, all is not what it seems. And Tess Gerritsen proves once again that she is one of the best writers of this kind of thriller police procedural type book. I love this. I think I gave it four. I'll just have to check. I have written it down somewhere. It would be a moment. Yeah, four out of five stars. It, you know, it wasn't as good as some of her stuff, but it was still really, really good. I really enjoyed that one. Um, the second book was a book that my friend gave me, and that's Andrew, Gro Andrew Gross Reckless. Um, this tells the story of a man named Ty Hayek. He is an ex-cop who now works in the private sector. Uh, a friend of his is murdered um, and he's not convinced that it is um, a home invasion murder. He thinks there's more to it and there is and basically it involves the financial institutions and somebody is trying to bring down some of the Wall Street businesses so they can take them over and is um so basically the three seemingly separate events that may be linked from small town America through Wall Street to Central Europe and London. Um I did really enjoy this one. Um I thought it was a bit long but it was still really good and so because excuse me while I'm just turning the page I, I because it was a bit long I gave it four stars out of five it dropped a star because I thought it was just too long <laughs> and some of it wasn't 
maybe necessary but in the end you, you know it all linked up it was a very good book and like I said four out of five stars uh, Andrew Gross um, started his writing career with James Patterson so very if you like James Patterson it's that sort of thing and then the next one I read was while My Eyes Were Closed by Linda Green. This is a story of every parent's nightmare. She's playing hide and seek with a four year old in a park. She turns her back, answers her phone, and basically walks away to start counting to 100 so her daughter can go and hide. When she turns around, her daughter's disappeared. This was such a good book. I, did, I didn't want it to finish. It was one of those books where I desperately wanted to know what happened but I also didn't want to know what happened because I was afraid of what would happen so I was really afraid that it was going to be a really really tragic ending and oh my god it was so twisty and turny and twisted brilliant I gave it five out of five stars because it was that good a read it was creepy it made me not want to know what was going to happen I don't even have kids and I was oh I was it was it was a hell of a ride I really enjoyed that book so again if you like that sort of mystery not murder mystery there's no murder which is great I've just given away the plot <coughs> but yeah it was just such a ride I really really enjoyed that one so I gave that one five so now um on to the books that I read while I was on holiday and I'm just going to pick up my notebook which I've put on the floor again I'm doing this a lot today so the first one I read on holiday was um, uh, an arc from NetGalley, um, so which was in exchange for a fair and honest review and I will put a cover up here and that was All Our Wrong Todays by Elon Masai. Now this one has been everywhere, it's got so many good reviews, so many people have said how much they've loved it. So basically Tom Barron lives in 2016 but he lives in the perfect 2016. He lives in Utopia um, which was created back in 1965 when this um, invention was switched on and I can't remember the name of the guy who switched it on but it's his engine. It's called an engine but it's not really an engine and basically they work out how to make everything so moving sidewalks and flying cars uh teleportation there's all sorts of things all the food tastes perfect um there are no written books anymore it all plays out in your head your clothes are tailored to your body every morning you have perfect dreams and you wake up lovely he doesn't feel like he fits in, he is no good at anything, he can't hold down a job so his dad gives him a job in his lab. His father's inventing time travel. And this whole became about time and space travel because you have to move in space if you're moving in time because the world spins, <coughs> which has been done before in Jackie O, saving Jackie O and I'll put a picture of that if I can remember to do it. So, he something happens and he ends up going back in time to 1965 when the engine switched on for the first time and he changes history and he goes back to 2016 but it's no longer his 2016 he ends up in our 2016 so now he wants to try and make it right he wants his utopia back he doesn't think it's fair that just because he prefers it in this world in our 2016 his name is John and he's a success he's an architect and it turns out that John also has Tom's memories so when he designs a building it's based on the utopian uh, buildings of, of 2016 that we haven't got I really enjoyed it the net the net galley arc wasn't brilliant there was a lot of formatting issues with it which was a uh, annoying but it didn't uh, spoil the story too much for me I gave it four out of five stars because I felt that there uh, was repetitive in parts he would sum up the chapters and I didn't think there was a need for that because I'd already read them so I get to enjoy it I gave it four out of five and I would would wholly recommend reading it it was it was so it was very clever a very clever book uh, the next book I read on my Kindle was another Net Galley book that I got in exchange for a fair and honest review, and that was Final Girls by Riley Sager. Final Girl um, is the last girl standing at, at the end of a horror film. That's where it comes from. Last girl standing. Final Girl. Quincy Carpenter is a final girl. She survived the massacre of her five fr uh, of her friends. Five friends killed. She was the only survivor. She was saved by a cop. Um, and has moved on with her life. She has a boyfriend, she has a successful baking blog, and she seems to have moved on. 
Samantha Void is a final girl. She survived a massacre in a hotel. She has gone off grid. And then there's Lisa Milner. She was the first of the final girls and she also survived a massacre that killed her friends. She turns up dead, an apparent suicide. Um, and then Samantha Boyd turns up at Quincy's house, trying to get her to remember what happened because Quincy does not remember what happened to her and her friends on that day. And the whole story goes about her finding out and getting her memories back, even though she doesn't want to. And to be fair, I don't actually blame her because it is quite a horrific thing that happened. But when she did, the twist is immense. This was a book I could not put down. Literally, I just sat there for hours reading it while I was on holiday. I was at the pool or on the balcony. I did not want to put it down. Brilliant book. Five out of five stars. I really, really loved it. I loved it so much that I will probably buy this when it comes out in hardcover, if it comes out in hardcover. Sometimes they just come out in paperback in the UK. If it comes out in hardcover, <coughs> I'm having it. As you can tell, my voice is still going. Don't know why. Okay, so after that, I read a book called Artless, which is by Kathy Hammond. This was from Amazon. It was a free uh, Kindle download because I download loads of them for free. And this is the story of a girl who basically works in an art gallery and in an auction house. And her, a friend that she lives with, their painting is stolen. And then this guy comes along who is very handsome and rich. And she's got feelings for him and he's got feelings for her. He's an art collector and she goes to New York to appraise his, his grandfather's art collection. And she thinks she sees the painting that was stolen from her friends and it turns out to be a similar one but not the same one so there's all these misconceptions all these mistakes that she makes these errors it was it was funny it was very very enjoyable it was well written i, I actually really really enjoyed it and uh, i think i gave it four out of five stars it wasn't too long she's got a friend who you know i love these books they've all got gay friends who dress impeccably and then they go and dress their friends as well and i just you think that's lovely you know it's fantastic because we all have impeccably dressed gay friends so I say I do no if you don't why don't you because I do um so that was another one and the last ebook I read when I was on holiday was Love Muffin and Chai Latte by Anna Wilde I only give this one three out of five stars not because I didn't enjoy it because I actually did enjoy it I just felt it was too long it just, it just went on and on and on and on. And I thought, it got to the point where I thought, I'm only like 30% through and it seems to have been going on forever. You know, <coughs> and there just wasn't enough to hold me. I did finish it. The ending I thought was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. And some of it, bits of it were really funny. There was just, it was just too long. It could have been so much. It could have been a bit shorter. And from too long to too short. And the final book I read in the first half of February when I got back from holiday is a book called The Wind on His Back by Mary Alexander. This is, uh, was sent to me by Troubadour. It's, uh, from, it's a Matador imprint. And this is six short stories about love. Um, each one is very, very good. So you've got titles such as The Wind on His Back, After Rick, uh, The Good Samaritan, The Last Train, Christmas Eve, uh, well, sorry one more train not the last train and The Lost Button and I thought this was a very very good book and it deals with all kinds of aspects of love it deals with the love of a man and a woman and the man's dying and he doesn't want his wife to know because he loves her so much and doesn't want to leave her but she knows anyway <coughs> um, there's the story of the man who has divorced his first wife and married his second wife but they all spend Christmas Eve together hence the title Christmas Eve while he's carrying on with yet another woman so <laughs> some of the characters are not very likeable but the stories are brilliant and then there's the story of the grandmother and the grandson and their love and the way that their love works I thought this was a lovely book and it only dropped one star I gave it four out of five star and the reason I dropped it a star was I wanted more but in a way I'm glad it was this short because I have read several 
short story collections recently, most notably Stephen King's The Bizarre of Bad Dreams, and I love Stephen King, and Helen Oyami's What Is Not Your What Is you, Is Not Yours Is Not Yours. And I found that some of those stories I didn't like, they weren't as strong as the others, but with this very small book, and it is a very small book, um, it's only 59 pages long, every single story was very, very good. Um, so from that point of view, it is better than some of the stories which are crap, you know, when you get a big thick book full of stories by one author and you only like half a dozen of them and then maybe there's 30 stories and you like 10 or you might like five. In this one I enjoyed every single story. So that one was sent to me very kindly by a Troubadour Publishing, so thank you very much guys. I really did enjoy this. There will be a full review of each story on my blog tomorrow, so check that out if you want to. So those are the books I read in the first half of the month. Currently I am reading a book called The Holocaust by Lawrence Reese. I bought that at the airport because I thought that's a great holiday reading. It's not, it's, it's a factual book. I'm also reading Find Me, which is a, a, a book I'm reading for part of a blog tour published by Heather Zeus. I'm also reading For Generation by Pat Barker. So, so these are some of the books <coughs> that you will either see full reviews of all will be in the wrap up at the end of the month. So that's it for this one. This is quite a long one. Um, there will be a very long book haul in the month again because I've already got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one books to haul, and it's not even the end of the month. But that's coming later. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've read any of the books below, leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought about them. And of course I will see you soon. Don't forget to share this video with your friends.